Hello, welcome to Prank School. Sixth year, fourth, uh, fourth day, uh, first video. I'm going on with our talk and our talk writing, and I will be for quite a while, actually, I think. But in a sense, here's time out. Uh, I want to say a word about comedy in, uh, with vowels and, and diphthongs. I should have capitalized vowels, I guess. Um, I'm not a big fan of humor, of language itself being used for the purpose of humor or comedy. I, I think it's so often denigrating. Uh, it's, it's quite a popular genre, I guess you could go, ooh, genre. I ought to write that one down, <laughs> too, genre. Genre, that word. Um, and I've got some stuff about it, but I stopped collecting it. I, I think I'm too sensitive to the, the elitism of the prestige, prestige dialect. Uh, well, in any case, I do want to mention a few things, but before that, I've saved this because I want to show you. Um, <clears throat> a, a, a and I together. I say yes, I use them when I write because I use them before the letter R. Uh, so, <clears throat> so it becomes air. In a word like there, the pronoun there. Uh, and, and I distinguish that between air, which would be, which would be the, the E, Y, A, air, air and air, I think sound enough different that most of the time when I remember to do it, uh, before an R, but that's just about the only place that it would occur, I think. I wanted to mention that. Ow, 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 ow. Actually, <clears throat> very close to here, outhouse. Uh, here, the, the what predated a bathroom, the out, it was outside uh, where you <clears throat> went to the bathroom, uh, it spelled outhouse. Uh, that, here, in my dialect, I would say outhouse, outhouse. But if you go as little as 20 miles to the east of here, and then certainly if you'll go another, <clears throat> if you go a total of 50 miles, you'll run into an area where they're going to say outhouse. Uh, it's not natural for me to say that, but uh, in that dialect it exists. Uh, let's see, I double circled this because the double, the two used together. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, some of you may remember Donald Trump <clears throat> <clears throat> when he was presidential candidate and would say just about anything at all in order to get elected. Uh, I couldn't help uh, no, uh, noticing his idiolect is actually what's calling it. Uh, no, uh, I'm not saying that he was an idiot, but not now anyway. But, and oops, idiolect is, is a unique speech to one person. Like everybody has an idiolect. And in his idiolect, he does a strange thing with an initial W. <clears throat> initial, I mean, when it begins a word. And I heard it so often, because he would talk about we're going to build a wall. And, and the word wall, which in my dialect, <clears throat> I, would, I, would, I would say wall, wall. But he did something different with the W, and I thought about calling it the Trump W. Whoa. We're going to build a wall. Uh, it's very difficult for me to do it. But if I had to represent it, I, I, I think I would probably put it as two W's together because it's like he dwells on a little bit along. And I don't mean that as humor. At this point, I'm, I'm simply using that as an instance of something you might have heard, you might have noticed, and you might continue to hear. Now, why I've got this stuff up here is because I realized that, that there's a, I left a vowel, a, 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 a consonant out. It's not very common in English, but when I have to, well, it's a consonant blend. I think I usually do it like that, which is uh, a, a uh, what's it called, a digraph. Oh, I'm getting them mixed up with two consonants together that don't, they, they don't actually represent two separate sounds like S and T, or as in start, they're both there, but SH is, uh, ah, I'm, I can't think, I, I'll call it a digraph for now. Anyway, j, j, uh, and when I heard, looking at my video, and I heard myself mention the prestige dialect that usually dominates, in other words, mothers want their children to 
speak the prestige dialect because they'll do better in school and socially they think well prestige I would spell it prestige that's a hard uh, it us it's usually associated with French I'm not always I don't know if it's always coming from French the way Americans say garage 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 it is it's in there and then just now I, I pause because genre <coughs> Oops. Genre. Genre. I, I think sometimes I've thrown a J in there. Uh, I, I might even do it as a DJ. J, uh, maybe that's why I'll have to look into that when I go into the consonant, uh, uh, constant blends. So anyway, I wanted to mention that uh, since I had the opportunity. Uh, one of the things about Artok writing is I, I limited myself to the symbols that are on a keyboard. <clears throat> that was very limiting. Uh, oh, and another thing I should say, like garage, uh, uh, garage. Uh, it, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll go to capitals, or I'll underline it if it's if it's. If it's going to be necessary, I, I almost think I went DJ. I'll have to look at that. Uh, if it's necessary to show where the accent syllable is, I'll either do that or that. Do that if I'm on a, a keyboard. Uh, all right, now, uh, I said comedy. Well, one other thing to tell you that's not necessarily comic yet is that in Europe, uh, there, I had once read, and I, I can go back and find it, I think, that there's a line across Europe. If you imagine, here's Western Europe. Here, up here's England, and here's France, and there's Spain, and uh, here, here's Germany. There's a line that goes something like that, <coughs> an isogloss, that separates languages. <coughs> and it has to do with the sound U. Uh, in German, it would be U with an umlaut over it, which became uh, now UE, as in Müde. If you're tired, you're müde. And, and if you go across that line, these languages don't have that sound. And I'm not even sure if they had an explanation of why that is, but so many languages have that vowel. <coughs> well, that does have to do with humor, because the three things, well, two are, <coughs> are funny. Let me, let me start with this one, the E. Charlie Chaplin in The Great Dictator. <coughs> <coughs> He gave two speeches that I want to mention. Uh, now, first of all, this was about 10 years after silent movies, after it was possible to have sound in movies. Charlie Chaplin went on doing uh, silent movies because he thought that it was the better art form. But when he finally did a sound movie, it was The Great Dictator, <coughs> which spoofed Adolf Hitler. <coughs> well, the two speeches I, I'll mention there, and I'll mention the first one, the second one is not funny, but the first one is he's spoofing Adolf Hitler's speaking pattern. And you'll hear him doing an awful lot with that WW. I recommend it. I'll give you the link. Uh, you might say he's spoofing German, which, and, and as I said, I don't like comedy, and, and I am dearly fond of the German language. Uh, it is like such a close cousin to English and has so much to teach English. But in any case, uh, if you've never seen it, I think you might think that's actually quite funny the way he spoofs the speak, speaking pattern um, of, of Adolf Hitler, or at least his fame. Uh, but that's the second one. Actually, I'll squeeze it up here. The first one that, that, that I thought you might, if you've never heard of it before, you might want to. Uh, an entertainer named Spike Jones back, whoops, Jones back in the 1950s did a Hawaiian... Uh, uh oh, Hawaii. How, huh. I run in. I probably don't have that spell right. Hawaiian war chant. I think is what is what you'll find it as. I'll give you the link. Uh, and in it, uh, it's well, just like Charlie Chaplin. It's masterful. Uh, the the singer's use of vowels and diphthongs to make humor. Now the Hawaiian language. One of the things it's known for is it has comparatively few consonants. I don't know if it has that many more vowels and diphthongs 
than uh, other languages, but it ha doesn't have that many consonants. Uh, and so you hear so many, it, it gives one of the, it, it's one of the things that makes it sound like Hawaiian. And they're sort of playing with that in the Hawaiian word chant. Go to the, about the first minute is where he breaks loose into his, and it's, I mean, it's humor. But you just, you might just think it's really funny. First time I heard it, I did. Um, and great, and the great dictator Charlie Chaplin uh, demonstrated himself as being such a master of speech in, in that spoofing. It was the, in case you wonder, the, the words he's speaking, they are not German. Uh, they are not English. They are, are, are really a mix. It, it's, it's, a, it's like a miracle. Now the one other, the second speech is the really famous one. It's the final speech of the great dictator. And that one, I'll give you the link again, and that one is not at all funny. But once again, very, very much worth uh, listening to those two speeches. I'll give you the links. But uh, I also wanted to say that back about, ninth, or about June or so of last year, when I began to actually get afraid that, that Donald Trump might win the presidential election and what a disaster that would be, I was hoping I could attract some comedian's attention that would spoof the candidate, uh, Trump, in much the same way that the great di dictator, too late really to make a difference, spoofed Adolf Hitler. <clears throat> and I thought that Trump's speech patterns uh, were peculiar enough that they could very easily be spoofed and spoofed well. Uh, it, they were spoofed on Saturday Night Live some. I didn't listen to it that much. I'm not sure. And they were appreciated. I mean, the, he was applauded for his, his work, that man, but I think he could have done better. But anyway, uh, my effort in that was, and I have it online, I, I guess I should give you that link as well. Uh, I called it, uh, I wrote a screenplay, sort of, or I described a screenplay, and, uh, and it was Maman's Metamorphosis, Metamorphosis. That means change. And in the course of that, uh, that uh, spoof, which I described, it, it would begin in much the same way, uh, making Donald Trump, the candidate, look completely ridiculous with his speech, uh, and hopefully be very funny. But then by the end of it, after the metamorphosis, after the big change, he would uh, speak a very different way in a very different line. So. I don't know, I say comedy, but it's a dark comedy, I guess what I'm suggesting. But you're going to have to follow links to appreciate what I'm trying to show here. Bye for now.